Hi there, it's Tim G5TM with another video and thanks for joining me again if you're a regular and if you're new to the channel think about clicking that subscribe button or that notification bell if you want to be notified of any future videos I might bring out. Now I've been looking in the last day or two at an antenna that's intrigued me for a while. It's called the, uh, I believe it's called the Ribikoff or the Rybakov antenna. My bad on the pronunciation, it's R-Y-B-A-K-O-V. And it's a 7.6 metre long vertical antenna fed at the bottom with uh, normally anyway 4 to 1 current ballon designed to cover 40 through 10 metres. Now 7.6 metres is about 25 feet in length. Now why that length? Well that length of antenna actually gives us um, about a 3 16th wave on 40. That means it's about three quarters the length of what a quarter wave vertical would be. And on 10 meters, which is the, of course the far end of, of our spectrum, the, the highest band we're looking at here, uh, it's about a three quarter wave, which means we're just at that cusp, but we don't, we don't want the antenna to be much longer than that, because then we get some high lobes uh, so beginning to come in and uh, less, far less gain at five degrees off the horizon for DX. With a four to one current ballon, as you can see on the right hand table here, in fact, I've got a four to one in gray, the nine to one in blue. I'm going with the four to one in this instance because that tends to be the, the ratio that's used. So with the four to one, for example, as you can see, we've got uh, a range of, uh, of SWR, a lot lower than what we had earlier. In fact, 10, uh, sorry, 10 meters is up to 4.5 to one. Compared to the table on the left look, you can see that basically we bring the SWR down on, on every band, barring 10 metres, but it doesn't make much of a difference anyway. So there we are, so we've got to play with then, at the feed point that is, not at the end of your coax, where you're operating, this is at the feed point. So um, how are we going to feed the antenna? Well, what I thought we would do with the 4 to 1 current ballon option is I'm going to model this as if we're, we're feeding it with about 7 metres of Hyperflex 10, which is effectively very near to being the same as LMR 400 on HF. It's about 23 feet. Then it's going to go into a common mode choke. Then a little run of RG58, about 8 feet. That's about 2.5 metres of it just into the tune, and I'm running that because if I'm going to be portable, I need some fairly thin coax to get in through the car door, uh, because at the end of the day, if I need to shut the door because of inclement weather or whatever, then um, I, I can't be running that thick coax to try and shut the door with that. I need to keep the window open, and that defeats the whole object. I have briefly looked at the 9 to 1 option, and there's not a lot of difference between them. The one issue we have got is on 40 metres, where the 4 to 1 current balance tends to bring in um, a better match and less loss on the feed line than the 9 to 1 on and wood. And that's probably why the 4 to 1 current balance is used with this antenna. So how am I going to model this? Now, I have used MMANA just, just to compare it with uh, what I've done. I've looked at the antenna itself. And I'm going to compare it with quarter wave vertical antennas as well for each band. Let's have a quick look and see how they look like on each of the bands. So 40 meters, for example, as you can see there, not a lot of difference between them at all. 20 meters, yeah, the quarter wave, which is in red, by the way, the Ribikoff's in blue. Uh, slight advantage at higher angles there for the uh, for the quarter wave, but that those low angles of radiation just off the horizon, basically not a lot of difference there between those two antennas. If we then look at 17 and 15, now 17 meters, the Ribikoff seems to have a slight, very slight advantage at between five and 10 degrees. And that gets pronounced as you go to 15 meters. As you can see there, look, the, um, the, the, the the current pattern at five degrees up off the horizon, by, by, by the way, this is all five degrees off the horizon I've been sort of trying to compare these two antennas with, okay? But you can see that the current pattern on 15 meters with the Ribikoff is a lot flatter than the quarter wave vertical. We've got a lot more gain now coming off that, that, that small angle, that sort of five, 10 degrees. And in fact, when we go to 12 and 10 meters, something very interesting happens with Rubikov. At 12 meters, if you look at the note at the bottom on the left, you can see that basically on 12 meters, the Rubikov is not far off a 5 8 wave. And look at the pattern in blue there. And you can see that at five degrees off the horizon, that sort of, that sort of level, it's got a lot more punch to it than the quarter wave would as a ground-mounted quarter wave. Similarly, on the right-hand side, 
Uh, we are getting out sort of uh, some more higher lows. We've still got a very good performance at five degrees off the horizon there too, where it's a three quarter wave on 10 meters. When we're still punching ahead of the quarter wave, ground mounted vertical on, uh, on 10 meters as well. And in fact, if we go back to the next thing, uh, looking at our five degree takeoff then, if we look at each of those frequencies in turn, on 40 meters, the Ribicoff just beats the quarter wave. Uh, on 20 meters, it just sneaks ahead of it again look, by 0.3 for dB. But as we go to 17, 15, 12 and 10, we can see an increasing gap between the Ribicoff and the quarter wave vertical in terms of its five degree uh, it is gain at five degrees off the horizon. And in fact, at 12 meters, we've got a four and a half dB difference there. Um, nearly four dB is at 10 meters, two and a half dB at 15, and nearly one and a half dB on 17. So at first glance then, okay, hopeful signs here. We do have um, a bigger mismatch to deal with. We're gonna look at those feed line losses in a minute, but in terms of actual gain, uh, low angle gain, uh, the Ribicoff uh, certainly shows some promise. Of course, this antenna is a non-resonant antenna. It has to be that in order to try um, through a tuner and through the four to one current band to provide some sort of match uh, in all these different bands. So if we have a look at what I've provided here for you, look, we can see on the left hand side, first of all, that we're comparing it against a quarter wave ground mounted vertical. Now I'm in blue there, you can see that on that left table, I'm basing the quarter wave ground mounted vertical for each band as if it has a 1.25 to one SWR, all right? And you can basically see throughout from 40 through to 10 meters, with the exception of 10, that gives us 0.2 dB uh, on feed line loss, all the other bands are 0.1. Remember we're using the same coax that we're using for the Ribicoff here, okay? Now we can pair that back to the Ribicoff again on that left hand uh, table in grey. You can see now what the difference is, including, you know, d just having the, the coax loss here. So we're 1.5 dB on 40 meters and it ranges up and down to, you know, 1.4 on 15, 1.4 on 12 and just under a dB on 20 and 10. So, okay, so we're, we're, we're about a dB, dB and a half down on feed line loss compared with the Ribicoff in this configuration. Okay, uh, the Ribicoff is, sorry, get that right, a dB and a half down to a dB down, maybe half a dB down on some bands compared with the quarter wave ground mounted vertical. Fair enough. Now on the right hand side, as I'm about to show you here, look, is something even more eye opening because if you're going to be bringing in a balance, if you're going to be bringing in a um, certainly a four to one current balance, if you're bringing in a tuner here, you're going to have some extra what we call insertion loss. Now I've gone um, like this, put my finger in the air, and I've gone for two dB. I think two dB is probably a plausible figure. It can vary widely, but let's go for this. 2 dB, I think, is a, is a reasonable figure to go for here, based on what I've read around. So actually, if we now factor that in as well as the feed line loss on that right-hand table, we can see now on 40 meters, actually, the system loss, as I'll call it, which is the feed line, the tuner, and the ballon, we're losing about 3.5 dB. We're losing 2.5 dB or so on 20, around 3 dB or touch more on 17, 15 and 12, and about 2.5 dB on 10. So suddenly, that doesn't look so good now, does it? So the full picture is to look at not just the feed line losses and the system losses, which we just have, but also we've got to bring back those gain figures to factor into and get a full picture on how this antenna works against, say, the ground mounted quarter waves on these different bands. Let's have a look first of all at 40 meters. So at 40 meters, you can see there at the top, on the left, on that second column along, we know that we are 3.4 dB worse off with the Ribicoff compared to the quarter wave vertical if we're looking at what I would call system loss, right? That's the loss in your coax, your tuner and everything else. We have got a 0 0.01 dB better performance in terms of gain at five degrees off the horizon. So overall, we're down about 3.3 dB if we're chasing that DX. That's kind of ballpark figure. Okay, 20 meters, a slight improvement. We're only down 2.6 dB initially with the system loss. 
We're gaining 0.3 with our five performance at 5 degrees off the horizon, so we're down 2.3 dB. OK, 17 metres, it gets better. We're down 3.1 dB with our system loss, but we're gaining 1.3 with that 5 degree takeoff performance compared to the quarter wave, so we're down 1.8. And then we start to make some serious inroads then. 20 metres, again we're down 3.3 dB with system loss, but we're gaining 2.6 dB now with our 5 degree performance. So we're basically less than a dB down. No, no much difference there. And on 12 metres, it begins to turn the other way. Now on 12 metres, again, we're losing 3, 3 dB compared to the quarter wave vertical with the system loss. But what we're also doing now is gaining four and a half dB on our five degree takeoff performance. So actually now we're up overall by 1.2 dB compared to the quarter wave. And on 10 meters, we're only down, say only down 2.4 dB with system loss. We're gaining 3.9 of that five of that uh, five degree takeoff performance. So we're up by one and a half dB. So, okay. It seems to me that this antenna, therefore, that 40 metres is there as a as a convenience thing. I think, you know, it's not going to be pulling up trees on 40. In fact, it's not really pulling up a lot of trees on 20 or 17 either, compared to a quarter of a vertical. But... What we've got to bear in mind here is that with the sunspot cycle the way it is now, we're now with the sunspots are really creeping up or climbing up quite a lot on the higher bands. 15, 12 and 10 are basically open now nearly every day. And they're going to get better and they're going to get stronger. And I'm just thinking this antenna with the, with the punch it has compared to a, a good antenna like a quarter wave vertical, for example, um, on those higher bands that will become really busy over the next uh, few years, this could be a good option. Had I looked at this antenna a couple of years ago, I would have thought 15, 12 and 10, eh, whatever, you know, they're open now and again on contests, for example, 15 and 10 that is. Never heard a voice on 12 till last year. So at the end of the day, you know, I think uh, the way the way we are now in terms of the sunspot activity, this antenna could prove to be a bit of a winner. Now, finally, there is one way you can improve the river cough, and a lot of you are probably thinking this. If we move the ATU far nearer to the feed point, then we've got far less of a mitch, uh, mismatch even uh, to deal with before the tuna has to do its thing. Currently, we're, we're putting uh, what we're putting about nine and a half meters of coax before the tuna does anything. Well, if we change that round so the tuna's far nearer the feed point, we might get a much improved performance. So let's say, for example, we feed the four to one ballon with a, a meter, three foot of say SL7 coax, which is the equivalent of RG213 really, but the same. Um, and then we've got the ATU, nice weatherproof remote ATU. And then we've got the rest of the feed line as it was, uh, seven meters of uh, Hyperflex 10 and two and a half meters, whatever it was, of RG58. OK, so let's see how that does. And in fact, I have worked it out and let's see what the improvement is. So on 40 meters, uh, we can see there that we've now got in search, so system losses of 2.2 dB. And if we read across that top row, that's 1.3 dB better than the initial system we had for the Ribicoff. So actually we're down now at the end. If you look at the last column with the uh, the system loss and the performance at five degrees off the horizon, we're now two dB worse off. Okay, then we are against the ground mounted quarter wave. That's becoming a bit more respectable. At 20 meters, we reduce the gap to 1.7 dB in the far end there, look. On 17 meters, we're now less than a dB worse off. And on 15, we're now better by half a dB. We were about 0.7 dB worse off. Uh, 12 metres, we're now 2.5 dB better off. And on 10 metres, we're 2 dB better off. So, to be honest with you, once you bring things down to, I don't know, 2, 1.5 dB, we're beginning then, I think, to, to largely, or to a fair degree, negate some of the differences between these two antenna systems. I know life is not simple and yes you've got to put a, a remote tuner out there and yes it has to be waterproof and things can go wrong and it's another bit of equipment. I get all that. But if it squeezes out another dB, dB and a half for us on somebody's bands then it can make 
maybe the slightest difference in terms of our performance but certainly uh, again on the higher bands now we're better now on 15 12 and 10 than the quarter wave we are very much breathing down the neck of the quarter wave on 17 we're still at one and a half to two db worse off on 20 and 40 but it's certainly an improvement, isn't it? And it just shows that when you put the ATU nearer the feed point, you've got less of a mismatch for it to deal with. And therefore, the overall coax run you've got will hopefully have far fewer losses. So overall, would I recommend the Ribicoff? You know, I think I would. I think I would. And I would because it's going to be so quick to deploy. It's one wire. Uh, you can put down maybe, I don't know, what would you put down? Maybe four bunches of four two and a half meter radials. All right, get them down. Um, this antenna will sing on the higher bands, 15, 12, and 10. It'll be respectable on 17 and 20. It'll be okay on 40, all right? Let's be honest with you. The biggest factor that gets us contacts now, we can do as much as we can by, by making our systems as efficient as we can, as our antenna systems and everything else, our coax, feed line, whatever we're using. But at the end of the day, it's down to the propagation. It's down to the sunspots. It's down to the propagation. It's down to whatever is served up to us in terms of conditions. I think this antenna will do okay. It'll certainly do very well if you get near the sea, by the way, which is something else I'll be looking at in a different video very soon. Um, but I think certainly, providing you can put the ATU as near as you can to the feed point, keep the run of coax before the ATU from the feed point as small as you can, as, as short as you can, use the best coax as you can. I would also recommend you use a common mode choke at the end of the coax before it uh, gets into your radio as well, even before it maybe gets into your car or gets too near to your operating system, because there's going to be some common mode for certain on that coax at the thought. So choking that off before uh, it gets uh, in, into the ATU at some stage would be good, and certainly before it gets into your into your into your radio you need radials there's no doubt about that but actually you know it's one wire it's one pole you scatter some radials down you connect an atu up and off you go and to be honest with you i think certainly given the fact it's got that punch on those higher bands and given where we are with the sunspot cycle i think this antenna could do really well well, thanks for watching. And as I say, if you like what you see, then it'd be lovely to have you on board as a subscriber. But uh, pop your comments down. If you've used this antenna before, then uh, let me know what you thought about it and uh, whether you intend to use it again. Anyway, good to have you with me. If you want to see the next video, it's coming up here. And to subscribe, click on just under Sean somewhere there. Hey, 7-3, thanks for watching me and uh, you take care. Catch you again. Bye-bye.